Hey YouTube, it's Penny. I'm recording this on May 20th of 2015. I'm going to bring you a compilation of several dreams and visions that I believe are all related to one another, having to do with um, the demise of America. Uh, before I do, um, I was remiss in the last two videos I meant to um, encourage you to listen to a Rick Wiles interview with a prophetess named Mina Lee Grebin that was recorded on May 7th and 8th. Um, really, really powerful confirmation of um, many of the things that I've been shown. Um, and I mean, the Father's shown her a lot more um, about what's coming this fall. So I'm going to put a link in the description box. It's two part interview. So, okay. Um, some of these dreams I have previously shared, but I'm going to go ahead and um, show them again in case you missed it. So beginning with January 20th, back in 2013, I had a dream where I was riding on a bus with my mother. She was facing me um, in the opposite seat, so she was riding backwards. Um, I looked out the window past her and saw the most beautiful mountain range. Um, but it was cut in half by the position of my mother's head. Um, so one side of it was appearing differently than the other. And I hope you can picture what I'm trying to describe here. Um, I asked the driver to stop the bus so that I could get out and take a picture. Um, as I got off the bus, it was suddenly darker, um, like dusk. And my mom said that I wouldn't be able to get a good picture because of the low lighting. There was a, a tree line that was obstructing my view of the mountains once I got off the bus. So I was running down um, the trees trying to take a picture of the mountain range, like in between the branches. I saw fireworks going off in the background. And then I saw a homecoming queen um, in the foreground. She just kind of like appeared. And as I continued to snap photos, it became clear to me that this homecoming queen was Asian. At the time, I asked the father for interpretation and received that the mountain range um, that was different on one side than on the other side represents a divided kingdom. Uh, the sudden darkness represents twilight's last gleaming. The fireworks represent um, the rocket's red glare. And instead of seeing the Statue of Liberty or an American flag or, you know, something else from the Star Spangled Banner, you know, the fact that I was shown an Asian queen, well, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Matthew 12, 25, Luke eleven seventeen, and Mark 3, 24 all say, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And there's also been a lot of prophetic warnings about um, if and when um, the land of Israel is divided, that Elohim will divide uh, the land of America. Um, on March 29th of 2014, I dreamt that someone gave me tickets to a Bruce Springsteen concert on my uncle's birthday. I asked my mom when my uncle's birthday is, and it's in January. Uh, although this dream was given to me on my older brother's birthday, and he looks a lot like my uncle. So um, it took me a long time to figure it out, and then I finally understood that the father was actually showing me this uncle. So the connection that um, you can make between Bruce Springsteen and birthdays is the song he wrote called Born in the USA. Lyrically, the song deals with the negative effects of the Vietnam War on Americans, but is often misunderstood to be patriotic or nationalistic. On July 4th last year, 2014, I dreamt that I was driving an open air Jeep and picked up a little blonde girl with a large brim hat. As we took off, I said to her, hold on to your hat. Well, that evening, David and I were over at our neighbor's house for a 4th of July barbecue. And before the fireworks started, I went into the house to get something. And as I was walking past the TV on my way out, um, the Wheel of Fortune was on um, and there was an older gentleman watching. Um, in the house, and Pat Sajak was reiterating this Wheel of Fortune puzzle that a contestant had just solved, and it was, hold on to your hat. And I about fell over. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what did you just say? So I knew that he was showing me something specifically about July 4th, hold on to your hat. Uh, January 24th, uh, 2015, this year, 
I dreamt that I was in the women's section of a large department store. There was a magazine rack near the checkout counter and the Mother's Day issue was still on the shelf. Now, keep in mind, I had this in January. Um, Susan Sarandon was on the cover and the whole magazine cover was in shades of coral. And I have a whole file on the color coral that I'll try to make a video about soon because um, it must be significant or the father wouldn't keep showing me that color. So um, I knew that there was a big celebration going on that day, um, the day that I'm seeing this magazine. But instead of people going from boat to boat like they do during the seafair celebration in Seattle, they were going from house to house. Um, so to give you an idea what I'm talking about with this um, people going from boat to boat. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures from Seafair Weekend um, where these boats all tie up to what's called the log boom and literally people will walk from one boat to the next. It's kind of nuts. So there were several undercover policemen who were posing as party goers uh, and they were looking for people who were breaking the law but because we weren't drinking we had no need for concern. And the scripture that um, comes to mind for that is uh, 1 Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So um, the reason that I believe that the stream was the 4th of July um, is because people were in groups having their pictures taken. I saw a group of older gentlemen who were wearing tuxedos that had been given to them. However, they were more like body suits um, than regular tuxedos, kind of like those t-shirts that look like tuxedos. And one man was saying how he liked them because they had red carnations, which added a splash of color. I saw other groups of older people who were wearing outlandish, you know, red, white, and blue outfits, and they were posing for pictures like this. So I'm walking across a large lawn to the place where we were staying. It was like a hotel and it was near the beach. I've had numerous dreams where I'm at the water's edge, which makes me wonder if it's symbolic of getting ready to cross over the Red Sea or the Jordan River. Um, I mean, Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun, so these cycles all repeat. And the, the word Hebrew actually means the crossed over ones, meaning from the other side of the river. So I was saying that we should go swimming in the ocean since the weather was nicer today than it had been the previous year, um, which is another reason why I believe this dream was pointed to the 4th of July, because in Seattle, the 4th of July is statistically the rainiest day of the month. So I knew that we would have to shower and change to get ready for dinner. And again, showering and changing my clothes are also very common themes in my dreams, which I believe is representative of being baptized and receiving a spiritual change of garments. So I was in the bathroom getting ready to take a shower. Um, my sister was there and my husband was on his way. Um, my mother came, oh, that's interesting. I just realized what, what that means. My sister was there and my husband was on his way. My mom came on the uh, telephone intercom and said that there was a call for me, but she didn't recognize or couldn't pronounce the, the woman's name who was calling, but was a scheduler from a company called Fieldworks Seattle. They conduct these research um, interviews um, and she was asking me if I was available to participate in a study on such and such a vaccine. I don't remember the name, but I recognized that it was experimental. I said no. And so she started to ask me about, well, are you available for this other study? Um, and I interrupted her to say, I no longer live in Seattle and I'm not able to participate in any of your studies. There was some interference on the line and I couldn't understand what she was saying. Um, but I wrote down that I also remembered something about somebody making milkshakes and needing more ice cream, but all I had was half and half. So here's ice cream again. The scene transitioned and I was now in the restaurant of the hotel where I saw a late lunch meeting that was just ending. So there was this group that was sitting in the far corner of the restaurant at a large round table and Jeff Goldblum and another actor were there. I don't remember who the other actor was. Um, anyway, they were shaking hands with this older gentleman 
whom I understood was the catalyst for the, the meeting, like the reason that they'd all gotten together. He had on a hat and looked like an archeologist or researcher and reminded me of these two movie characters. I saw an elderly couple sitting at the table and as everybody was getting up to leave, I saw the husband hand a copy of a book that I knew he had written to, um, to this older gentleman, this uh, researcher, professor looking guy. And um, I saw the jacket of the book and it said Marshall Masters. If you don't know who that is, he's written several books about Planet X not from a biblical viewpoint, I don't think, and, and so I can't recommend his books, but I do know that he's, you know, got a lot of videos on YouTube, that type of thing. Um, at that point, I heard Jeff Goldblum say to this other actor who was getting up to leave, he said, tell them we'll be there at 5.30. I'm sure that's significant, um, I have no idea what the, that means, um, but I did have the understanding in the dream that they were expected somewhere for dinner. Um, so I was walking through the restaurant towards the lobby elevator and I was trying to, to time it so that I would catch the same elevator as um, they were so that I could hear more about what they were talking about. Um, and as we're all getting on the elevator, I heard them mention something, excuse me, I heard them mention a movie um, that they were getting ready to make called Who God? like who dat? And I knew that they were planning to make an irreverent movie questioning who God is. I was curious why the Lord showed me Jeff Goldblum in this dream. And so I, I looked up um, the list of movies and just here's just a sample. The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Right Stuff, which is about going into outer space, The Fly, which was an early movie about, you know, transhumanism or crossbreeding um, animals with humans. Um, Earth Girls are easy. Never saw that one, but doesn't sound good. Uh, Jurassic Park, and of course Jurassic Park 2. Independence Day, and interestingly enough, Independence Day 2 just started filming this month, May of 2015. The other thing that was interesting to me is I saw an ad, I don't remember where it came up on, on a website or YouTube or something, and it was Jeff Goldblum. And he do he's a part of this ad campaign for apartments.com. But it was weird because I'm gonna show you a couple of screenshots of this ad. It says change your apartment, change the world. And see how he's holding um, the planet in his hand and it's green? And then in another shot, he's making this, he's not just pointing up, he's making this hand sign. I'm gonna show it to you, but it's difficult to make. I mean, it's like you have to put two fingers down, one like this. What does this mean? I don't know what this means. And subsequent to, to when I saw this, a couple of days later, I saw this image, and I, I would love to give credit to the person um, and I don't remember who it is. If it's you, please make a comment. Um, I think it was someone in a YouTube video and I caught it because this woman is making the same hand sign and it might have been something having to do with um, September 23rd because there's a guy who's got a patch that says 23. Anyway, here's the clip. If you have a clue about what that hand sign is, let me know. Okay, so February 25th of this year, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night to the song 76 Trombones. <laughs> I wrote it down, fell back asleep, and then I woke up to the, the song Yankee Doodle Dandy. Um, but specifically, it was the lyrics, born on the 4th of July. Okay, so since th these two songs were given to me on February 25th, which is my husband's birthday, I believe that it's about um, our country's birthday. Since the USA was 200 years old in 76, 1976, um, you know, I vividly remember our small town's bicentennial celebration on the 4th of July that year as we all dressed up in period clothing from 1776. So I looked at the lyrics to that song, and here's a couple of them. There were 50 mounted cannon in the battery, thundering, thundering, louder than before, 
um, set clarinets of every size and trumpeters who'd improvise a full octave higher than the score. 76 trombones led the big parade, and I've had lots of dreams about parades, when the order to march rang out loud and clear, starting off with a big bang, hello, sir, <laughs> a big bang bong on a Chinese gong, Asian, by a big bang bonger at the rear. So, um, I mean, I've heard that song, you know, over the years, but um, not in a long time, and I, I certainly had never looked at the lyrics before. Uh, okay, so I looked up July 4th, 1776, and interesting, it was on the 17th of Tammuz, which is Tom Tammuz. Okay, so Tom Tammuz is the day when ancient Israel worshipped the golden calf. Sound like America? The 17th of Tammuz is a Jewish fast day, so it's not a feasting day, it's a fasting day commemorating the breach of the walls of Jerusalem before the destruction of the Second Temple. It falls on the 17th day of the Hebrew month of Tammuz and marks the beginning of the three-week mourning period leading up to Tishbiah, which is the ninth of Av, um, which is, you know, the so much destruction has happened in Israel's history on the ninth of Av. And, uh, okay, so there's a gentleman who goes by Zeus, um, Moss Spender, I think, um, who asked me to watch one of his videos because um, it's about the curse of daylight savings time. Okay, I'm only halfway through the video because it's long, like this one, sorry. And um, I'm going to put a link in the description box for you. But he gets to this point in the video where he shows... Um, this singer from the band Chicago, and um, he, he sang Saturday in the park, I think it was the 4th of July. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I think the reason he showed this is because it was like, does anybody know what time it is kind of a thing? But the whole 4th of July thing caught my attention because I knew that I was going to do this video today. So I just felt like the spirit was prompting me, look up the 4th of July this year. Guess what? Not only is it on Saturday in the park, um, it's on the 17th of Tammuz. When the 17th of Tammuz falls on Shabbat um, in Israel, it's commemorated the following day on a Sunday. So that's why um, it doesn't show Tom Tammuz on the 17th um, of Tammuz this year on that calendar I just showed you. However, um, I looked to see if Tom Tammuz falls on the 4th of July anytime in the, you know, near future, and it doesn't. So I'm going to end with um, part of the Torah portion for July 4th of this year um, from Micah chapter 6. And by the way, if you're interested, I'm going to read this from the Etza Fair. And if you're interested, we actually um, send out the weekly Torah portion in an email. And I'll include a link in the description box if you'd like to sign up to receive that um, in, your, in your email inbox. Um, it goes out on Friday mornings. Okay, so starting in verse 6 of Micah 6. And they shall waste Et, that's Aleph Tav, the land of Ashur with the sword, and Et, the land of Nimrod, in the entrances thereof, they shall deliver us from Ashur when he comes into our land and when he treads within our borders. And the remnant of Yaakov, Jacob, shall be in the midst of many people, as the dew from Yahuwah, as the shower upon the grass that tarries not for man nor waits for the sons of men. And the remnant of Yaakov shall be among the other people, meaning the Gentiles, in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treads down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Your hand shall be lifted upon, up upon your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah, that I will cut off your horses out of the midst of you, and I will destroy your chariots, and I will cut off the cities of your land and throw down all your strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of your hand, and you shall have no more soothsayers. Your graven images also I will cut off, like the golden calf on Wall Street, and your standing images out of the midst of you, and you shall no more worship the work of your hands. And I will pluck up your Asherah poles out of the midst of you, so will I destroy your cities. 
and I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon Et the heathen, such as they have not heard. Chapter 6. Hear now, Et. Chapter 6. Hear ye now, Et, what Yahuwah says. Arise, contend you, Et, before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear ye, O mountains, at Yahuwah's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth, for Yahuwah has a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Yisrael. O oh, my people, what have I done unto you, and wherein have I wearied you? Testify against me. For I brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of servants, and I sent before you at Moshe and Aaron and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of Yahuwah. Wherewith shall I come before Yahuwah and bow myself before the high Elohim? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will Yahuwah be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good and what Yahuwah requires of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your Elohim. Baruchatah Adonai, Eloheinu Malach Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the Universe. Amen.